thank you for that. And on that note, uh, we have a lemon to talk about. Uh, and that lemon is Don Lemon. So bring me up to speed, Andre, and what the hell's going on here? Yeah, right. Uh, actually, we have Elon Musk to talk about because he's been on a roll, uh, basically smacking down both uh, Sweet Baby Inc. and Don Lemon. But let's begin with Don Lemon because, um, uh, Tom, I put a story behind the scenes here from the New York Post. Uh, where basically uh, it was revealed what he allegedly demanded. Team, Team Lemon have come out and denied that they wanted this, but uh, you know how the denials are. You can't always trust denials. But the background here is that just like Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon, once host of CNN, was to have his own show on Twitter. In fact, he's still going to. But apparently, he wanted some kind of deal wherein he would be paid an exclusive amount by X to host uh, his series there, beyond what any kind of creator would get to, uh, to, to host. And according to the New York Post, and I do believe that uh, that they have fairly good sources on this, he demanded uh, a Tesla Cybertruck, a five million dollar advance for eight million in total, an equity stake in X, meaning he wanted shares in X, and also he wanted a say in in X editorial and news policy so basically if this is accurate it sounded like he wanted to get in on editorializing for x in general and then he also had um, uh, elon musk on for an interview and after this interview which uh, which i think uh, elon musk detected detected some bad faith and that this was wasn't really lemon he wasn't bringing anything new to the table this was just cnn as it used to be on x so then whatever deal that they had going on before elon musk cancelled it and uh, af after that don lemon is just an another independent content creator on x and on youtube and stuff like that but whatever kind of uh, agreement he was going to have with uh, with X and Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson has some kind of deal. We don't know what it is. Probably it was going to be similar. That he no longer has. And since then, more clips have come out of this interview that uh, the, that he did with Elon Musk. And I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I put a clip in it um, uh, also behind the scenes, if you want to bring it up, where uh, where... Basically, Lemon is pushing for DEI in the medical field, and Musk is pushing back. Just so we can kind of like see where Don, Don Lemon stands here. Tom, can you bring that up? Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. Is this it? Uh, no, uh, that's the that's the article where it was specified. Um, a little bit further further down. Uh, I give the description of it. It's uh, from 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 X. Lips Lips TikTok, TikTok one. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hold on. Right. Sorry, guys. There we go. I believe that it, uh, if. If we if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor, you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay, but the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh. most doctors okay. most doctors now are white, and. There are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said, so if the standards, like, if, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, 
a, a surgeon in training is asked to do a, a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it's, I, it's happening. You, said, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but I said, if, 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 if we lower standards, people, people will die. <laughs> but why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower us lower standards. Okay, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the <laughs> Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that, D and there are still these inequities, right? And there's, and people still, there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm, I, I'm very, very, very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or, you know, an oncologist or something where, that, where the, the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors or? That's what, the, the, the audit, that's what that article said, that suggested, yes. <laughs> at, at Duke University. Okay. And that's exactly right. That's what DEI is and what it does. It is about lowering standards. It's about, okay, and I mean, this, it's, the, it's the tyranny and the racism of lower expectations, because that's what DEI does. It figures out all oh, the poor people of color and women and stuff like that. They're, they're just not as bright and they have it so <clears throat> difficult that they have to be subject to much lower standards. So, yeah, they're just not going to be as properly trained when we let them out. And uh, what Elon Musk is saying here, if you do that, if you lower standards, eventually people are going to die because of it. And that's that, of course, is exactly right. But being a good ideologue and spokesman for the establishment, Tom Lemon doesn't see it that way. Well, Don, that Don, I just, just looked at the stats. Don Lemon is being utterly disingenuous, which I'm, I know is going to shock you. Yeah, it's and so he's yeah. focusing on one element, and he's not addressing the elephant in the room, is that how many people of any subgroup are actually interested in getting into the profession? It, he is intimating that the percentage of black doctors is indicative of exclusion or racism. That's that's the thing he is actually trying to say without actually saying it. So he's an ass. So the stats are <clears throat> uh, in the United States among active physicians, 56.2% identified as white, 17.1% identify as Asian, and 5.8 identify as Hispanic and 5 identify as black. So why are there more Hispanics? It's it's really so he is trying to say that black physicians are being purposely left out of it, as opposed to saying it's a smaller percentage of group interested in getting into the profession, which I don't know either. I'm just I'm just saying that that would actually make more sense if you're going to make um, an assumption. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree with that based on those stats? Why are there more Hispanic doctors than black if if somehow there's racism? One, and then this is, I don't know if this is related to it, but I get what you're saying, Paul. And I wonder also if there wasn't a false sense, and this is going off of what Don was saying, I wonder if there wasn't a false sense of this idea that there was a bunch of diversity being injected into the medical industry and it was actually a, a net positive because we had a bunch of people come from other countries here, get educated here. A lot of them stay here is what I've heard too. Right. And and what and it's pissing off the countries they're coming from because they're sending them over here to, and they're paying for their education and then they turn around and decide to stay here instead of going back home. Well, but but he's also but, the uh, thing is he's not. I'm saying talking is that about... maybe like uh, my, my my point was this maybe is they maybe that uh, falsifyingly pushing the DEI number up into the positives than it would be had we didn't have that. And there, I know it's maybe kind of a 
a sidestep, but I wonder if that's maybe obfuscating the numbers a little bit is what I'm getting at. Does well, that well, make side, sense side to loading the numbers a little bit? Sidestepping clinical DEI, which is letting in people of lower uh, scores into right. the system. Okay, sidestepping that, the point is for him and people like him, which drives me nuts, it's that um, there's only one group that's important. Aren't Asians part of the diversity mix? mix? No, they're not watching anymore. Jason. No, no, yeah. but I'm I'm being sarcastic. But yes, no, I, mean, I know. Yeah, being, we're all being sarcastic, yeah. and this is what drives me nuts. So clearly, Asians as a group are more interested in being doctors. This this is not indicative of of I don't believe, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a certain group being purposely blocked out of the profession. Are there not more doctors of Asian persuasion in the U.S. than white doctors? Especially if anyway? you count Indian, yes. Well, if if you're talking about my region here in Burlington, which is quite white, uh, almost every single doctor is either Arabic or South Asian. Yeah. I, Same thing around here. A lot of them are being more or less. Uh, some yeah, sort of, kind I don't of see a lot of I mean. white doctors, and I don't care. And that was kind of where my me. question was coming from, because and that was what I was getting at. Doesn't matter Don, though, because he's a racist. No. Well, yeah, that was my point, because I feel like he's using a false number to go by, right? He's saying, well, the diversity has worked well. I'm like, is that really true diversity, or is that all these, like I just said, all these other countries sending their best and brightest over here, and they're just deciding to stick around, and they're counted as a diversity quotient at the end of the day, even though they're actually good doctors. But I get what you're saying. The difference here is you're talking about actual, but what it's, what, and that's what I think Elon is saying is, you're yes. taking possible false numbers and using that as logic to lead into this DEI thing, which is going to be, you know, like the the yeah. the, 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 the airplane industry is right now. Basically. Don does not want to admit that a certain group of people are not interested. Like, what's the Mongolian percentage here? Like, there's there's people who are interested in different kinds of jobs, right? I mean, at one point, oh, people, oh, there's not enough women in the HR department. Well, in the '60s, it was pretty much all men. Now, it's pretty much all women. What, what, well, can we retrench that now? How, how about we try to make it 50 50? No, no, I think we're okay with the way it is now. Well, uh, we'll keep it all women. I, I tell you what, Paul, we need to get back to a 50 50 split of On plumbers, everything. plumbers, sewer workers. You got it. Um, you know, uh, underwater welders. Um, we need, we need the, the, uh, we need the people that, Work in the oil fields to be fifty percent women. I have a feeling that uh, you know we need to stop this baloney sausage. Whether it be about the difference in sex or the difference in race on these things, you can look at it as a percentage of total per capita. You can do all those things, but it when it ultimately comes down to is people go into the industries they're interested in, and that's it. Uh, and 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 somehow to dawn, that's bad. Yeah, well, and sense. I had somebody who just messaged me in the background Don here as one of pledge. our regular listeners who happens to be uh, from South Africa. He says, actually, on the topic, um, I was told legislation here now have a massive problem where they lowered the standards, killed a bunch of people. We were re-upped standards and standards, and everyone either washed out or didn't bother to practice, either due to cultural taboos or because women all went and had babies. So now we're facing two generations potentially potentially of unqualified medical training oh due boy. to the pushing this DEI and university admission. And, and that's kind of sad because wasn't South Africa one of the countries that was having a lot more uh, advancements as far as like a lot more doctors coming out of there, I thought, too? That's a long time ago. I mean, yeah. They, yeah. And I, I mean, think so that's what South he's saying here is, yeah, it's falling apart now. Yeah. Yeah. My, South my, Africa, they have problems with their electricity grid and everything. My uh, one of my favorite videos is uh, a, a group of women were shown a uh, oil rig roughneck where the chains were just whipping around oh. the thing as he was pulling out the drill bits and putting them in. And he's covered in oil and, and, and dirt and mud. And he's just working in a way that was utterly staggering. And they asked the women, do you want to do this? They went, no fucking way. It's like there's just jobs that guys are going to do and there's yeah. jobs that women are going to do. I mean, it's yeah. well, the medical stupid. industry usually has a lot more women in it, actually. They, it, it is for now culture. for the, good. But, but but universities but, are way over prescribed to women. Well, OK, sure. But when it comes to when it comes to the medical field, I mean, there's there's biological. Oh, wow. We're getting in trouble. There are reasons why that is. 
because because women are more caring about people, men maybe less so. Let's just be let's just be fair. And now I'm going to get killed. <laughs> Listen, there there is uh, maybe not even in the recent past a lot of arrogant male surgeons. I've I've met them. They're yeah, I know. It's uh, part I, of the I part of the industry. Know. Is that yeah, a new I thing? Mean, a male surgeon? I've never heard of that. Insurgent, that... male uh, insurgent. A, a male surgeon? Yeah. Okay. I was, uh, uh, I, I met an arrogant, uh, really, really arrogant male surgeon once. He, he had like this, this era of, I'm the best knee surgeon in all of Europe and in the top five best knee surgeons in all the freaking world. Ooh. And it was quite okay because he fixed my knee. <laughs> you were like, it's all good, bro. Yeah, Thanks. all good. You can be as arrogant as you want because uh, because uh, he fixed my knee to the point before an injury where you're not supposed to make a hundred percent recovery. I made a hundred percent recovery. Wow, that's good to hear. So then I was like, yeah, okay, you know what? Be as arrogant as you want. You can <laughs> belittle me. You can doctor a house. You can do whatever. But you fixed my knee, and you fixed my knee in a way that probably no one else in this country, maybe this continent, could have done. But it, so it's all good. You know what? It, but it, it, it's not fair to other surgeons and people wanna, who want to learn from this individual. Um, a good friend of mine is an orthopedic surgeon here in Toronto, and she was treated <laughs> absolutely horrendously by... Uh, you know the 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 senior male surgeons. It's it's she almost didn't get the job. Anyway, I want I don't want to get into it, but it was horrific, and I don't see what was the point in treating anyone badly. What's the point in treating anyone badly? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't see that he treated anyone badly. He was just like arrogant. He was like, yeah, he had like that Tony Tony Stark aura. He, yeah. he reminded me of like the stock traders of the really really successful basically people top of the game who know they're the best and have reason to to be arrogant for it and i'm like yeah you know what you're gonna fix me and if i go to someone who's less arrogant i'll come away with 80 percent of what i was before whereas with you i'm gonna get to 100 and well i'm like yeah my, I, my I, employer I met, can pay that extra price i i did meet one unbelievably arrogant dermatologist who actually as same in your case helped me I, a bunch of students were floating around him. I had rosacea under my eyes for years, and I had to put steroids on it to just keep it at a minimum. And this guy, this old guy, walked into amongst all the students, and he went, so what's causing his rosacea? And there, the students went off and all this stuff. Da, 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 and he went, wrong! How do you fix it? And how do you, how do you treat it? Da, 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 da. Wrong! It's not topical. It is antibiotics. And he just, you are, he said, you're all a bunch of stupid asses. And he left. Wow. And he was right. I got the, to take the antibiotics. <laughs> yeah, he and was a doctor was house, right. basically. You need those people. Like, yeah, it's he was, very he was great. To to he cured my rosacea. When, when you don't need it. It's great to complain about nose be health, but when you're the one needing it, I'll, yep. I'll take the doctor house treatment. I'm very happy for the staff to suffer that abuse, too. I'm just going to create a few more doctor <laughs> houses out of it. Okay. I There's think that you'll no find reason. that a lot of a lot of doctors who have uh, coworkers, uh, nurses, um, PCAs, and other doctors who who don't give them a good review as far as a coworker, you'll find that their patient reviews skyrocket. So yeah. it's almost like there's this reverse really? correlation. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. they'll they'll come into the room. They'll take care of the patient. Uh, they typically have um, either a student doctor with them or, or, or not typically, but often will have a nurse in there with them, a student doctor, something, and the whoever's with them, like acting like their assistant, they'll be the one to kind of grease the wheels and make everything nice. And the doctor will smile and, and they'll, do, they'll do their job in the most proficient way possible. And they're friendly and they ask the patient if they have any questions and then they shake their hand, they walk out and it's like a light switch. They turn right back into a dick, but when they're with the patient, <laughs> then you know they're doing they're doing their job. They're caring for the the person that's in front of them, but um, yeah. you know then they'll go they'll go up to the desk to hand off some orders, and then they're just a yeah. But that's not nice, poopy head. Oh. And I'm I'm fine with that. I don't tolerate 
I'm I'm kind of a deadpan and I'll throw it back in their face, but in a very nice way so I don't get fired. Um, but I just I see that that correlation between um, arrogant asshole doctors and high high patient five star reviews. Interesting. Yeah, I, I Interesting. No, I I see that absolutely. But I can I understand that energy that. because it reminds me of the Andy Griffith episode where you had the couple that were always fighting with each other, but they were always nice to everybody else. So Andy yeah. tries to talk them into getting along, and as soon as they start getting along, they turn into jerks to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because just, well, you have that just stress. Just me of that. Sorry. You have that stress in the job, and you you have it has to come out somehow. Some it'll come out on your family, exactly, it'll come out yeah. on your coworkers, or it'll come out on your patients. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that's I mean, what I've seen. Interesting, but uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, D Bard even says six is right. Some of my doctors are great with staff, but the patients love them. But e either way, I mean, that all aside, the whole Don Lemon thing, let's get back to that subject a little bit more. Yeah. So, so Andre, so you're telling me he was meant to have basically his own de facto channel on X and he was supposedly contracted. Oh, he was going to be, he was going to be the ultimate Tucker Carlson. And, uh, now he's just a random content creator on X. And the main reason I think it's two things. One is that he had all of these ridiculous demands, but I think the even bigger reason is this interview where he sh did show himself to be a complete and total establishment chill, no independent thought of his own, no critical thought, just attacking Elon Musk for all of the standard establishment talking points. So basically he was just going to be the old CNN continued in everything, pushing the fake news, pushing the accusations, nothing changed. So uh, Elon Musk shut him down, like he also did Sweet Baby Inc. Yes, we're going to get and get to here. But I'm curious, do you, because now uh, Don Lemon, he's going to be uh, an independent content creator the same way that we could be in anyone else's. Do you think that he's going to draw masses of people, that people are going to be talking about him and Tucker, that the two will be competing neck in neck for views and popularity? What say you cultured? No. <laughs> I didn't even have to think about that. No. This he's got it, this is the problem, right? When when there's a level playing field, and in, in me, mainstream media there isn't because everybody's tipped over to one side. But when there's a level playing field, you are going to gather the most amount of people to what most people think. And most people think along the lines of Tucker Carlson. They don't believe in, you know, what the mainstream's in peddling. The, the mainstream has no influence any longer. Their influence is waning very quickly. And now the younger generations are starting to ignore the mainstream uh, more aggressively than even old guys like me. So you're going to see a, a very small following for him on this platform. I don't know how anybody could argue with that. Well, we do have an old guy on the panel, uh, one of those that, that uh, would have been used to watching the people like uh, Lemon for years and years and years and years. Maybe he isn't new to, or used to all this My new dad's here? fancy social media stuff like that. They don't have a YouTube channel or anything. So, <laughs> Paul, what say you? Well, my, Do you think that, yeah. My thought watching this and also reading about it was Don Lemon was showboating. I, I don't think there was any real substance in anything that, well, there was no substance in what he was saying. We took it apart already just now. Uh, but he was, I guess the stuff that he learned at CNN and the dishonesty with which he managed his account at CNN, I think he thought he could out intellect um elon i i think it was showboating i i think on on some level i thought that i got the feeling that uh he was um uh, bullfighting and if he could defeat the bull per se or or uh, not per se but if, if you could defeat the elon musk bull then elon with you know the fact that he is such a uh, you know, an ego driven person will be proud of me that I was able to handle, handle him sort of, you know, like the, you know, when someone says, you know, kid, uh, you know, you're an okay, 
you're okay, you know, kind of thing. But I, he was, I, I don't, I think Elon realized that he was not the kind of intellect that he wanted. I mean, look, look at people on the left, like Gore Vidal. I don't know if any of you are speaking of old, uh, remember him arguing with, um, with, uh, Buckley. I mean, those are fantastic debates. Those were two titans of intellectual, uh, uh, uh in intellectual debate skills. And, and, uh, Lemon is such a lightweight, unbelievable. So I, I mean, I, I thought, my my thought he was you know my thought going in not going in but watching it was that Don was trying to score points and show Elon just you know he's going to be a great addition to his channel but he wasn't he was fought you know a very poor battle that that was my thought I I, I thought he was grandstanding I think that uh, that you are right about that but you may be wrong about who he was trying to impress. Maybe he was trying to vie for another establishment job again. Maybe he was trying to impress someone in CNBC or something like that. Look at me, I'm taking on the evil yeah. Elon Musk. Give me a job. Yeah, well, but he, again, it's, it's the thing where he doesn't want to look like a pussy in front of his boss, right? I mean, he's he's trying to be a professional... Uh, uh, douche? A, a pro <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he was trying to be a professional... Um, uh, uh, you know, interlocutor, right? He's showing Elon that he made the right choice negotiating with Don for this position. But I think Elon said, wow, this this guy really doesn't have it. That That's what happened in this. Well, Don, And then the demands, Don, you, the, are those demands that he made real? Well, we... <laughs> His agent has come out and denied that they're real, but okay. uh, but that took several days, uh, and those demands didn't come out of the blue. And it does kind of seem like in character for a former CNN host to do something like that. So, so does, does Don do have that know. much money this sacked is, away? Yeah, this this is why I, I I have been saying the whole time that he allegedly asked for this, but in the days after that was revealed. It was denied, but it wasn't denied until the first working day after these allegations of what he demanded were made, because that story broke on Friday, and there was no denial until Monday, today, when it was issued to the to the trades. Uh, that, that's the kind of thing that I think would have been denied right away before that story spread. Uh, so, personally, I think there's something, to that he made those demands, because that would be in character, yeah, especially, so. es especially considering that, to further what you were saying, he might not have been in this to get some kind of indie deal with, with Elon Musk at all. Maybe his game was to humiliate Musk and then be taken back by the establishment. So, maybe... He he demanded a deal that he uh, that he um, knew that Musk would resign. Hmm. I'm just speculating here. No, that's an interesting but, point. But, but consider, consider this. Consider this. If he were to join T. Musk, if he were to be an uh, an independent developer on uh, on X, but working with an agreement with Elon Musk, even if he still would be pushing the establishment narrative. He would still be working for and validating the enemy, so to say. He mm. would undermining the CNNs and the CNBCs and the and the, even the Fox News and the ABC News because it would be sending the message: you're not needed anymore. You can come to X for Tucker Carlson, and if you want establishment news, you can come to that uh, for or come to X for that as well. Because a lemon will be here and give it to you. No need to watch any of these other things. So it would ultimately depower the establishment if he were to engage in such an agreement. I, so I, I, I would I would imagine that uh, Lemon Pledge probably thought that he had the same kind of charisma and potential audience as Tucker. What? Uh, I don't know that he's that deluded, but uh, oh, yeah. we're about to find out. Let's put it that way. I think he thought that he was going to get respect from Musk based on the questions mm. that he was 
that he was asking. Yeah. He was putting he Elon didn't... Musk on the spot. He asked him about his ketamine use. And I thought that Elon, he thought that Elon Musk was going to say, oh, that was, you know, that was a good, respectable interview. But from my perspective, and I watched the interview on like double speed, it seemed like Elon Musk was put off almost from the beginning that he thought that some of the questions and the way that he was taking what Elon Musk was saying and then reiterating it back to him was nonsensical. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. The deep yeah. You know why? I think that he would be like standoffish from the beginning because before the cameras roll, they're obviously going to have like a, a brief chat behind the scenes, right? Just like we do before we go live here and everything, they're going to do that as well. I think that he's going to knew right away, like, this is a bad faith interview. And that's why he's going to be standoffish um, uh, from the very beginning. Yeah. Even when he said that, you know, you asked for the interview and I'm here, I'm, you know, we're doing it. It's, yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to talk to you, happy to, you know, answer your questions and help promote your, you know, you coming on doing this partnership with X. And, but, but think about the exposure as far as Don Lemon's uh, YouTube channel succeeding now that he's off of X or not going to be on X. If he continues to do interviews like this, I mean, how many people clicked on that just because he was being a jackass to Elon Musk? If he continues yeah. to have people on and he's a net jackass to them, He's going to continue to get the clicks. He got my click. I didn't sub to him, but I watched it. No, that's a good point too. And I, I'm, and it makes me wonder. Cause like, I mean, Elon, I think you guys are probably right. He was probably bamboozled into this whole thing, thinking it was going to be one thing. And then when he got on the set, realized this is not what I signed up for. And yeah, I mean, it's, it happens all the time. Cause that would be like us inviting on, you know, somebody to talk to. And they're like, look, I just don't want to talk about this thing. And then the first thing you ask them is, oh, well, about this thing. And when you got them yeah, on the spot, exactly. like, what are they supposed yeah. to do? Right. Like, and then, yeah. and I'm sure that'll set the whole thing off on a, on a bad note. Right. It, that, yeah. or it, just beforehand, he was like, well, I'm not really sure I want to get into that business or, I, you know, and he just did it. I'm not saying that was what happened. I'm just giving an example, but yeah. Something along those lines is what I'm assuming. Yeah. He yeah, told no, Don, Don think... to go fund himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't really learn much about elon musk in that interview but we learned a little bit about um that's a good Tom point Lennon. i think he thought he was going to get a gotcha interview d but yep. yeah but i don't think he did in the end is but i see where six is coming from too it's like the whole you know no bad such thing as bad press thing right you're right you clicked on it yeah. regardless you clicked on it. It, it at the end of the day and he's well, we gonna clicked on it because of elon but right and if he continues to have people on that are are going to have the same i don't want to say controversial but um provocative or... provocative interviews then he's gonna you know he could he could make a channel that way but are people going to continue wanting to are, are the left going to start wanting to come on his show now that he now that elon's kind of i'm sure that say. some people some people would those that are, i'm sure he, he can get robert de niro any day i'm sure that he can <laughs> uh, he can get exactly uh, Mark Ruffalo any day, like all the people who are completely deluded, completely deranged, suffering the worst cases of TTS. Like again, I already mentioned Robert De Niro, who thinks himself such a brave fighter for freedom that uh, that the orange man personally is going to come and hunt him down and put him in chains when he's selected. He's going to get people like that done for sure. Who think that yeah, this is gonna bring them clout and everything. Yeah. But is he gonna get any viewers who aren't already on that side? Is he gonna win over any hearts and minds? Or is he going to just harden people all the more for the other side, for the Tucker Carlson side? I think that's what's gonna likely to happen there. I agree with you there, Andre, because that makes complete sense, right? Like his you're right. He can get De Niro all day long. He could get Ruffalo all day long. He could get any one of these guys all day long. And you're right. The only people we're not going to click on that. None of us would click on that. Uh, so that means a good majority of people or a good portion of people just don't aren't going to tune in or care. But you bring on Elon Musk or somebody like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're going to click on it. You're going to have a lot more people clicking on that than had you not before. And I can see exactly where Andre and six are coming from in this. And sure, Davina said it in the chat. Bad faith interviews are you know one shots but how many of these one shots does he need to get back into the good graces of 
you know, the people that are on the other side and whatnot. Cause that's the other thing too. We got like you guys were bringing up and alluding to, I mean, he's not exactly in the best of shape right now. I mean, with all the shit with his brother and all that stuff, but yeah. Well, we all have our crosses to bear. It, it just one last note for this and, and, and we'll let it move into the next phase is that the average age of a linear television viewer specifically, specifically for broadcast television news is 55 years or older. <laughs> so they're ignoring Don Lemon or were anyway. I mean, the younger folks, they're not going to pay more attention to him now because he's, you know, over on X or YouTube or anywhere no. else. He's just so sanctimonious as crazy yeah. as Tucker Carlson is sometimes to watch. And and uh, it's just a different experience. Don, like I, I don't know what Don is going to be doing for a living. I, you know, to me, when he, I hate to say this, when he arrived at CNN, I thought he was a DEI hire. He was because he's mean, a twofer. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, what's the name of this other guy as uh, uh, at CNN? The I forget his name right now. Help me out here. Harry the guy who comments on elections and everything. Other black guy. Oh. I don't watch CNN, so I don't Help me out here. Someone <laughs> in the chat. I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell a you. There's black, a guy, a uh, is a there black a dude from CNN? Yeah, like he's not a regular host, but he comes on one of the uh, frequently appearing talking heads. Always comes on talking about election and analysis mm. and election numbers and stuff like that. Wow, I'm looking at this. There's a lot of white folk on CNN. Yeah. <laughs> I got Larry Madawo, and I have no idea who he is. Victor Black Blackwell, there's... Not Vernon Jones. I, I checked that. Uh... Van Jones, Van Jones. That's the one. Van, Van Jones. Jones. Okay. Uh, Van, Van Jones, Jones, yes. He admitted himself that he was a diversity hire. He was hired oh, okay. because he was black, and he admitted this. Yeah. I don't mind Van Jones. Yeah, and I don't that care if, if on a TV show if somebody, well, I care, but the, the difference between caring about somebody's hired because of their diversity hire on a TV show is a lot different than caring if they're hired uh, and they're going to be my surgeon. Which yeah, goes but, that, to, it, but that's the slippery slope we're headed down, I think, is the whole point we're getting to here. We tried, you know, saying this years ago, too. And you're 100% right, Six. Yeah, it's a big difference. Big, big difference. But we got planes falling out of the fucking sky. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm nervous about coming to America. I have to take a freaking boat. Well, it, it, you know, that's a really good movie. Though. You sure you want to do that? I don't know. It's I check it. Say the history point. of boats isn't the best either. <laughs> maybe we should go back and see how, how that lines up with DEI crap, maybe. Yeah, but but planes are falling out of the sky right now. No, just, like, <laughs> you might wind you know, up on a cruise that ends up getting stuck in some. <laughs> well, except in Malaysia, I yeah. I actually uh, actually had a, a, a into the six minute uh, daily this morning, and there was another Boeing uh, plane that had a panel missing on a flight between oh, Oregon, Oregon and California. Boeing's and this not makes having me a good not want to fly too. Like well, I was serious about like maybe I should just drive. <laughs> Well, let me <laughs> you go and check out these uh, the web pages because I've done that for all of these airplanes where where like pieces are just falling the planes are just falling apart in a way that they didn't to before. Well, all of them they have these big graphs where they brag about how far they have come in their DEI measures and everything like that. So yeah, neon Wasn't knights the got, pilot got a woman. A boat. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. On that point. The competition bureau should bureau should never have let McDonnell Douglas uh, buy Boeing. Yeah, I agree with you. That's, that was, well, that I mean, the downfall of 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 success in America is whenever we allow for mergers to happen. Well, what especially do you expect if you agents. let a clown run your? Oh, you said oh, not McDonald's. Not McDonald's. Though. McDonald Douglas. Yeah, oh. but rewinding this conversation, here's a worse story. So Boeing is now warning. Uh, the people who have their planes that they need to check the pilot seats oh, Jesus because Christ. oh yeah because they had a, a plane actually plunge like thousands of feet because of a, a loose pilot seat. What? I'm not kidding. Wow. 
Those How the hell does that happen? I mean, I don't know. Those were two stories this morning. <laughs> I know it's been yeah, a lot coming out of the um, Boeing after they adopted the EI on their assembly line. I, I'm yeah. McDonald Douglas was what the killer is of Boeing. Boeing, not Boeing. 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 McDonald Douglas has the worst management, and they were allowed to buy Boeing. Which had some of the best. Boing. And and just to be clear, I'm not afraid of flying anything with female pilots, pilots of color, anything like that. I've done both before. It's been awesome. But before I could trust that they were qualified. I can't trust that anymore. Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford's more qualified, it sounds like. No. At least if you crash with him, chances are you'll survive. I love you know, flying like, KLM. Something will be broken. No, he just gets out and goes. My bad. <laughs> like, no, you put him on a set, he has more of a chance of dying than he does in a plane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, let's not forget the story about the Boeing whistleblower. We're going to talk about here, but who basically went out and said that if something happens to me, it wasn't me. It was done to me. And then, Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And then, then, he, yeah. Uh, then he self-deleted, apparently. Now, um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Good times. Uh, but moving on, uh, because on, on a happier and note, we're Elon Musk, yeah. uh, he didn't just take on uh, Don Lemon, which is fun and well. He also called uh, out Sweet Baby Inc., calling them basically a blight on gaming, and that he hopes the company is going to go under. That's a very nice signal boost right there, wouldn't it, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's on his radar now. Well, it, it and Alyssa Milano noticed that and had a little melty. That was fun. Yeah, do share. Can you bring that up on screen? What oh, did I, Alyssa Milano say and do? I, oh, yeah, now I've got to look for Because there's nobody I care more about its opinion than a Melissa Milano. Hey, you know, back in the time in my formative years. Um, I didn't care about her Oh, opinion that's the one either. in Charmed, not the uh, soap opera. Who am I thinking of? I couldn't answer that question. Uh, is the charm a soap opera? Kind no, of. charm was a no. It was like a witch. that show with the three women who were witches. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like I keep like mixing her with that bitch in Beverly Hills nine oh three four five six whatever. Not oh. Shannon Doherty, right? Or oh no, yeah, no, 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 not her. That's the one I keep on thinking about. You guys put me on the spot now. I gotta go find this. She tweet. was in Charles and Charles, wasn't she? Charles in Charge. Which show was she? Nicole Everett. Is that who you're thinking of, Paul? Now we're just throwing names out. No, I don't know. So Alyssa is uh, defending Sweet Baby, Inc.? She just noticed Elon's tweet. Oh, I see. Uh, and I, and I, I have it somewhere. Uh, give me a minute. This, you guys. Wasn't, wasn't oh, who's she the, the boss? one That's that, the one she was uh, in. that yeah. helped yes. Biden end the Me Too movement as well? The moment that she basically said that? No, no, no that no, was no. Rose Ralston. McGowan. That's that Rose was Rose McGowan? McGowan? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think sorry you're thinking about that. of. The other crazy one that lost her hair. But she well, shaved uh, it off. Alyssa Milano was the one that was wearing the crocheted mask. Uh, you know. <laughs> no, Alyssa was the one out there going, look what COVID is doing to us. And she was brushing her hair and she's like, it's making my hair fall out. Uh, no, your your brush was, lady. Um and her stress levels. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, her stress yeah. level. Yeah, that's she, she was wanted. probably watching too much Dom Lemon. But and Rose McGowan was also, him. yeah, but Rose McGowan was also on Charmed, yes. Yeah. And she was supposed to be Red Sonja at one point. Yes, she was. And I believe that's why she was in the Conan movie, because the Red Sonja thing never happened, right? Yes. She actually well, wasn't I'm that bad look, in that. I'm still looking for the tweet, guys, so I apologize. Good for you. So yeah. we need to vamp. While he, this is called vamping, gentlemen. Yeah, it, 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 let's um, see what Paul, we got for super uh, chats. Yeah, and there you yeah, go. Well, I was going to say, Paul, Paul can vamp about uh, the impact of Elon Musk trash talking Sweet Baby Yank. Who had seen that coming two weeks ago? No, I, and, and the thing is, the things that he finds interesting are always fascinating just in of themselves because often they're not mainstream. And, and also the gap between his interest, his wealth, Suddenly he'll pick up on something like this and you go, what? Huh? Why? You, oh my God, he's a gamer. 
maybe, maybe he is uh, trying to prevent uh, Gamergate too. You know. Well, we see the media is really trying to push Gamergate too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Need it. Here. Especially the game, like the the mainstream game news outlets need it. And and I heard after I had done my Canadian report on supporting <clears throat> uh, research on. Uh, degenerate gamers someone pointed out to me that the homeland security is doing the same thing in your neck of the woods there uh, tom are they yeah apparently they've got a whole uh, the the uh, biden administration is is now suddenly instituted some kind of program to investigate the same thing that the canadian government is doing like what a waste of money mm. unbelievable they know how to waste money they that they do and guess whose money it is? This clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the Morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There, you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey, and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe, and join us. Thank you.